eyes to run in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to run in a one horse open sleigh. Okay, so if my outfit and makeup looks kind of familiar, it's because um, I'm shooting this on the same night that I just finished shooting a song about Christmas. So today, we will be taking some inspiration from the lovely Pro Jared. And we will be talking about some D&D tales that I have. Three little short tales for the month of December. Because this is D&D December Tales. So, I haven't really done a lot of D&D because I only have two friends. And the one who's our dungeon master, Brian, you met him in Yim Day Stir Wars. He tends to get really tired with campaigns very easily when we start them up. We're currently doing the Minds of Fandelver. It's actually Lost Minds of Fandelver, sorry. Which is a starter campaign that comes with the 5th uh, edition starter pack, I think. We're only at part 3, because again, our dungeon master just gets tired easily. So, because I'm weird, I take notes. Like, I don't know if you're supposed to take notes in D&D, but I take a lot of notes. Someone's got to. Someone's got to remember exactly where we are. What creatures Jude's character is beheaded. Jude's character is a weird thing for decapitating creatures after slaying them. <clears throat> so when we started this campaign, we did like a little trial run just to get acquainted with the game because we'd never played D&D before. At least two hours, like at the beginning of everything, were dedicated to Jude figuring out his character's name. Now his character's name is Squibby Squoodle. It's either Squibby Squoodle or Squibby Wolfhow. But it's Squibby Squoodles in my mind. It will always be Squibby Squoodles in my mind. Now me, it was very easy with my character name because I always have only one character for all of my high fantasy ventures and Game of Thrones. I don't know if that counts as high fantasy. That doesn't count as high fantasy. Her name is Aramorel Fletcher, and usually she's a ranger, but in this story, she's a fighter. She's in a fighter class. Usually she's in a ranger class. So for this trial run, we totally skipped out on one part of the campaign, which is tracking some goblins at the beginning of the campaign, because I decided not to do that, because I just wanted to get to Neverwinter. We'd, we'd stopped at an inn in Neverwinter and just stay the night and stuff, and um, we were traversing the woods the next day, and uh, Brian's like, and then there is a... a thief! A young thief that attacks you and tries to steal all of your stuff. This young thief is attacking us and uh, Era, who is a lawful good in this campaign, she stabs him. Just freaking stabs him without question. Just immediately. Just stab in the stomach, I'm assuming. Young thief died and Squibby, who is Jude's character, chops off his head and puts it in his bag full of heads because Squibby likes to decapitate his em his enemies. So we go back to Neverwinter and we chill at the inn and then the innkeeper and his wife are just like, hey, so um, our son ran away last night and we're worried about him. He's very young. Um, we don't know where he went. Have you guys seen him perhaps on your in your journeys? Yeah, we killed a kid in cold blood! <laughs> so then, Era, Era rolls for like a charisma thing, I'm assuming, so that she can like lie her way out of this situation that she's very uncomfortable in. She manages to lie and say, oh, we did see him, he was dead. And then for proof, Squibby just pulls out the decapitated head of their son and waves it in front of them, traumatizing the poor innkeeper and his wife for all eternity. And that was story one. Story two is a lot shorter because I don't really remember what happened and I, I don't have the notes from that campaign. I just, I don't know what happened to them. They're not in this folder. So we were in this mansion or hideout of, I think it was a hideout actually. We were in this hideout or something 
of this gang that was sort of controlling the town. We were sneaking around the place and Brian at this point was just tired of everything and did not give a care in the world. Oh, I gotta back up really quickly. Jude at the beginning of, of this adventure got these pants because he rolled um, a d20 or something and he rolled a 20. Uh, I don't know how, he just, he, in this, in this campaign, he just had rolled so many, like, 20s, it was insane! So, he had rolled a 20 and somehow had managed to get these silken, beautiful pants that he'd found on the side of the road, and they were so beautiful that anyone who looked upon them would immediately do whatever Squibby said, basically. Anyways, we're in the Red Rent hideout and Squibby has his pants on. I think we were in a battle or so of some sort and, and then Brian just throws in the devil, I think. I think Brian threw in the devil. Brian, if you didn't throw in the devil, then please comment below and correct me because I think you threw in the devil. So <clears throat> the devil appears in our campaign. Clear indication that Brian is tired of this and wants to go play a video game. We're fighting the devil. In, in our campaign, me with a longsword and Squibby with a great axe, and then Squibby just throws his pants on the ground or something, and is like, I want to summon Jesus! Okay, Squibby, roll for it. He rolls. It's a 20. Jesus appears. Jesus fucks shit up. Everything is amazing. And I think Jesus just destructed everything, a la Noah's Ark. And that's what you get when you have a bored DM. Oh, and this third story. Um, I think this was actually, like, it happened in the campaign. So, we also have this, um, ongoing rule in, um, this campaign. Where, uh, when we're fighting an enemy, then Brian will roll and see if it, one of them is a cow. So like if it's a goblin and he rolls and it's a good number, then it'll be a cow with a knife. <laughs> and it's great and I love it because I love cows and it's just, it's specifically just a thing for me in this campaign. And that'll come into play later on. We're, he we're in the Red Brand hideout. This is a different part of the campaign. This is like an alternate universe from everything that happened in the previous two stories. But in this universe, we've been serious as serious as you can get in a D&D campaign with a character named Squibby Scoodles. And we are like under the mansion hideout that the Red Brands have in Neverwinter. And we're with an NPC, Sildar Hallwinter. And we find this hidden door after fighting like a Nothic. We come into these crypts and there are sarcophagi and there are skeletons and there are... I wrote down oak trees but I'm fairly certain there are not oak trees in this crypt. So the skeletons are moving. The Squibby asks if he can roll for a dance-off with the skeletons. So, Ryan rolls. It's a 20. That's right. We had a full-on dance-off with the skeletons. And we won. Yeah. Sildar did not participate because he doesn't pull his weight, but uh, we still won. The skeletons liked us. Our dancing skills were, were pretty lit. We get out of the crypts and then we end up in this area where there are a bunch of slaves, which is very like, oh my god, we gotta break these guys out of here. We get the skeletons to help us! Skeletons come, they fight the bad guys with us, which is kind of cool. And then we release the slaves, and then we go back a ways, and, and then end up in this hallway, and then we end up in this small room. We find guards, and there's a goblin that faints upon seeing us. And then there's a bugbear and a goblin, and... You know how we had that cow rule for if Brian rolled and it was a good number, then one of the enemies would be a cow? Well, Jude asked, hey, can you roll and make one of these a furry? So, Brian rolled. The bugbear was a furry. The furry took off his suit 
I guess it's just okay. And we ended up tying up the furry. Squibby um, interrogates the furry and gets some information about Wave Echo Cave. So eventually the furry gets taken by Sildar, I think, to go get his head chopped off. If you like this video, give it a like, comment, subscribe. I don't care what you do, but I will see you tomorrow, which is Christmas. It's Christmas tomorrow. If you don't celebrate Christmas, then um, it's just another Sunday. But have a great Sunday, and I will see you tomorrow. Happy vetted.